How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the commission. My name is Bryce Newberger, and I'm the youth director here at Summit Ridge Church. And uh, let's get back into our series on the Romans Road and what a road it's been. Uh, so before we get started, I want to let you guys know that uh, we are in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're going to do verses 14 through 23. So uh, while I give my little intro, if you want to turn there and let's pray to begin. Thank you, God, for tonight. Thank you for bringing us together as one, even while distant, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, having your words speak true to us today, God. Uh, help, help to encourage us and to, to challenge us, change us, and help us to apply your word to our lives, Lord. Uh, give us good questions for small groups and, uh, and, and give us great Christian fellowship, God. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Guys, uh, the other day I was uh, watching my baby boy Trent in the morning. This is our standard routine. Uh, Amber kind of takes the night shift a little bit because she's got to feed him, and then I wake up in the morning, and at a certain time I'll hold him until Amber recoups all the lost sleep she had. Um, he seemed content. He, uh, he seemed happy. He was crawling around. He was he was playing with his toys and, and uh, you know, looking at whatever was on the TV and kind of dancing to music. He was just having a great old time. Uh, then... All of a sudden, I noticed something about our, our morning routines. You see, he's completely happy. He's completely content. And then his mother comes down. Amber comes down. And he's no longer satisfied with me, his brothers, or any of his many toys at his disposal, any music on the TV. He crawls up to his mother, and he cries painfully until she picks him up. It dawned on me, it dawned on me in that moment, that nothing compares to his mother's embrace. When he is reminded of what glorious fulfillment he gets from being held by his mother, nothing else can hope to satisfy. I began to think about our relationship with God at this, right? Because it's, it's like, oh, like being held by my mother, nothing compares to that, you know, for, for Trent. And I began to think about us. And I began to think, man, are we content with just being held and loved by God? Is that all we want? Or do we get distracted, right? On the flip side, do we become distracted with the food, the television, the toys of our day-to-day -day lives? We forget our Heavenly Father's embrace and are led into these other things. The part of us that wants nothing more to be connected with Him and, and held by Him is, is lost, and we get just distracted by these other things. Well, if we could connect ourselves with that part, if we could tap into that nature God put in us that is, that is desiring to be with him, to be connected with him, then we can tap into a little bit about what Paul is going to be talking about today. See, Paul explains in Romans that it, not just us, but the world, creation itself, is groaning like my son Trent. We are all waiting for that full restoration, that connection with God, that heavenly home, that heavenly body, all of these things, things are not as they should be. And waiting in the meantime is suffering. We get hurt, bruised, broken, scarred. We get sick, we die, our houses burn, our money fades. There's earthquakes, tornadoes, and pandemics. Guys, let's see what Scripture has to say about the state of the world and the state of us as we wait for the fulfillment of God to come back and bring us home. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I hope you guys have had enough time to turn there by now. Um, for those of you who still need a little help, Romans is in the New Testament. It is after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then you're going to find yourself in the letters section of your Bible, and you're going to see Romans. So, um, for all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons, right? Romans 8.14. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, so that we, that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. 
for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay in the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. Not only that, but we ourselves who have the Spirit as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Guys, this section of scripture is extremely challenging. Can I just point that out? Scripture was written for all people for all time. But we have to remember it was written to a certain people at a certain time. So it was written for all people for all time. But it was written to certain people in a certain time. And so sometimes we may find that our culture, our experiences don't line up with what Scripture is talking about, okay? Especially the culture of youth being young, right? So uh, you guys probably don't know what labor pains feel like. Some of us never will. Uh, but uh, so, so let's look at this, right? So there's a lot going on in here. We, we've got, we've got uh, words like, like bondage and slavery, right? We have uh, adoption. A lot of us haven't been adopted. We don't know what that feels like to be adopted um so uh there's there's a lot right and then we have words like redemption of our bodies what does that even mean so if you pick up your bible and you're alone and you're you're in your morning and you're you're reading your morning bible and you come across this section of scripture you're gonna have to work really hard to try and understand it but it's not too far gone for you the fact that it's hard means that God is inviting you to study his word, right? It's not going to be easy. It's not low-hanging fruit, right? John 3.16, For God so loved the world that uh, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, right? That one's pretty straightforward. God loved his son Jesus. He gave him for us. If you accept him, then you get to go to heaven and have everlasting life. That's not very hard to understand. This, on the other hand, what's going on here? So, um... I went through and I found three major elements in this that are just repeated over and over and over. We have words like uh, God's sons, adoption, God's children, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Uh, so God's son, God's children, we are the first fruits, right? We're eagerly awaiting the adoption, right? So these words, and, and it says Abba, Father. Abba means like daddy. So to him, whom we cry out, daddy, father, this is a this is saying that God is not like we don't approach him like, Father. No, it's like, it's, it is a daddy. It is a, he is your loving, relational father. Not this just paternal figure, but he's also someone that you can cry out to. Daddy, help. So that's what Abba kind of means. So we have all that. So children, adoption, sons, right? This, this, this lineage, this, this uh, generational, these, these adoption children words, right? Now, the next part is uh, we also have um, waiting words. We may also be of this present time. We eagerly await with anticipation. We'll also be set free until now, eagerly waiting, right? These are, these are words I'm reading that I've highlighted, but um, these, these words constantly of waiting. And the last thing I want to focus on, so one, two, the last one is suffering, suffering, suffer, futility, bondage and decay, groaning, labor pains, and groan. These words reappear over and over. So we can see three main things stick out here that are just repeated over and over and over and over. We are God's children, we are waiting, and there is suffering. So let's connect all these together and see what's, what's going on. Um, <clears throat> we are children of God, adopted by him and gifted a heavenly home right so let's talk about this god's glory won't change people only god will restore all creation right so we're talking about the world groaning too paul wrote that creation eagerly waits for the day when god will make all things new prophets spoke about a new heaven and a new earth and the apostle john saw in his revelation when god created the world he declared it very good but sin marred it it, it messed up that creation this was not the fault of nature but of humans who turn their backs on God. Unfortunately, humans have continued to make the problems worse by failing to be good stewards of God's creation. Think of a gardener, right? A steward of God's creation would be someone who's like a gardener, tending a garden, taking care of these things. 
The created order was cursed at the fall, but will again be restored to its former state. Just as people will forget death and tears, nature will be rescued from its blights and flaws. Creation will again reflect God's glory in a way that hasn't been seen since Eden. Right. So this is what we're waiting for. This is what creation is waiting for. Then, Paul used uh, in verse 22, Paul used another human Im uh, image to illustrate his point about the impact of sin on nature. Childbirth. Creation has long been groaning under the weight of sin. Natural disasters and diseases may, see common, may seem commonplace, but they're not part of God's initial plan of nature. That's not how God wanted it. These pains are not the result of fatal wounds that won't heal. Instead, they're more like a woman's labor pains, right? Having a baby is a very painful process. Just ask Amber. Um, as she draws closer to the point of delivering the baby, such pains are incredibly intense and difficult, but lead to a blessed event. Likewise, the stress and strain that marks creation right now point to an incredible new birth within creation. Once the time of groaning is passed, nature will be renewed and restored, right? And so the same is true with us. So we right now, we suffer. Like I said, we break, we, we burn, uh, we, we bruise, we scar, all these things. Nature, there's, there's tornadoes, there's floods, there's famines, there's pandemics, all these things. These are like labor pains. And this beautiful gift is on its way. My children are beautiful gifts. But this beautiful gift is on its way. And we are suffering with these labor pains. And eventually we will have a new heaven, a new earth, a new body, a new reign of God upon the, the world. There will, there will be no sun or moon in Revelation. It says, I just read this to the kids uh, out of the children's storybook. Uh, there will be no sun or moon because God will be our light. And so... We are we are God's children, and we are we are gifted with this heavenly home, right? We have this gift, and it, we talked a little bit here, but this 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 suffering because we have this promise from God, we also have confidence that our groaning and waiting won't be in vain; it won't be for nothing. While we currently enjoy the benefits of spiritual adoption, our relationship with God will find its ultimate fulfillment in the redemption of our bodies. So, when you become a Christian, you become a child of God. But you still have this body on that we deal with flesh, uh, and so uh, our flesh is known as a carnal nature. Sin, sin in Scripture is, is associated with flesh. It's not to say that um, when we die, it's going to be like cocoa, and we're just skin and bones. No, no. Uh, but what it's saying is that uh, we are the sin that is wrapped in our earthly nature, which is why they, they focus it on flesh, because you're wrapped in it. You can't escape it. Um, it will be removed. The sinful nature will be removed and we will have a new heavenly nature where there's no sin, there's no temptation, there is no, um, you know, uh, falling away from God. None of this, none of this can happen. It's a new heaven, new earth. The, there's no fires or tornadoes, everything. It even says the lion will lay with the lamb. It's a whole thing. So, uh, we are, we are waiting. Waiting is suffering, but we are we have this hope that our waiting and suffering will not be in vain. And as we talked about this hope, it's not like, oh, I hope it won't. It is a firm, confident hope. So, uh, but we wait with anticipation. Such hope was an important theme for Paul. Just as creation awaits its restoration, God calls Christians to eagerly wait for the fulfillment of our hope. As we wait, we live as his children now, but we anticipate the completion of our adoption in the life to come. To calm the noise of the world, we focus on the spirit who leads us. Right. So, guys, if I want you to get one thing out of all of this really complex verse, uh, it is this. Do not grow tired of doing good while we wait for God. Do not grow tired of doing good while we wait for God. Right. Waiting is this anticipation. We're waiting. Why is there so much sin in the world? Why do bad things happen to good people? We'll find that there's really no such thing as good people. So it's more of why does God let people to thrive? But all this, do not grow tired tired of doing good while we wait for God. Run the race. Fight the fight. Right? Galatians 6, 9 is actually what our send home is based on. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. So guys, do not grow tired of doing good while we wait for God. Just like baby Trent, we should look forward to that wonderful thing that has no compare. To be held by our Heavenly Father, just like baby Trent is not content with anything of this world. He just wants to be held by his mommy. Let that be true for us. 
let us not grow content. Let us not grow uh, uh, hypnotized, lured away, distracted by all of these things. It's not to say that you can't do them, because you have to wait. You can't just walk up to church and cry until God picks you up. It doesn't work. Uh, but um, focus on, on your scripture, on, on prayer, on God, on his good nature. And yes, you can play video games. You can eat good food. You can watch football. You can, you can watch rugby, right, John? But you can do all these things. But do not let them replace God. Always remember him. We know that all is not right here in the world, but do not grow weary in the waiting. Do not grow weary of doing good. Run the race. Fight the fight. Stay strong and keep waiting. The day will come, but until then, let's stay busy for God. And that means even in quarantine, even as you're having online interactions and you're spending all this probably extra time on the computer because you have to and all these things, don't grow weary of doing good. Keep striving, keep fighting, keep working, keep sharing the gospel with people that you see online, that you, that you are interacting with online through text or anything, and, and look for those opportunities to make Christ known. Run this race. Do not grow weary. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for, for just encouraging us that even in the midst of pandemic and quarantine as as we witness the groaning of the world god the groaning within ourselves to be united with you in heaven to be united with our loved ones who are already there waiting for us god we love you lord but as we as we are waiting god encourage us not to grow lazy not to grow distracted but to focus on you and not grow weary in the waiting thank you lord for all these things in jesus name everyone said amen